The Radio Forest Podcast. Forest, it's Philly Ocean. Welcome to the show. I think I talked to you about six months ago. What have you been doing since then? Dude, we have been touring so much, and this year is even busier than last year, if you can believe that. You know, last year, I think we, we talked about our EP, Seize the Day, came out. The music video with Mario Lopez. We're actually currently in the studio working on another two albums, actually. It's just, it's going like crazy, man. It's, it's awesome. The EP, wasn't that done with Jimmy Buffett's label? So did you have any like direct interaction with him? Um, only one time I passed him in the hallway. But he was incredibly kind and sweet and uh, just an awesome guy. And, and, you know, I wish we, we would have gotten to know him a little bit better while he was still alive and still, still with us. But his legacy uh, impacted us just like everyone else. He was incredibly inspiring. I think his whole vibe was just so needed in this world, honestly. So what are you guys teasing now? What are you work on? I, I, working on? I saw something with Chris Lord Algae again. Are you guys doing maybe a full length or another EP or, or what's going on? Yeah, we're doing a full length album and we're working on some uh well, I don't want to give I don't want to give away the spoiler. We're going to be announcing some really cool things later this year. But yeah, we're we're working on some really really cool stuff. This year is our biggest tour yet. We're going more places that we have never been than ever before. We're going all over the country. Over 100 shows this year. It's so cool because this thing just keeps growing and growing and the crowds get bigger and people really are responding incredibly well to this music, which is, it's just so humbling. So I want to talk about the tour, but let me jump back again real quick with Chris Lord Algae doing the, um, the EP with you guys. So if you're quote unquote working with him again, now obviously the first step to getting him is being able to afford him, but he's big mm-hmm. enough that he says yes and no to projects. So has he worked with other artists similar to you guys? Because he's, you know, one of the best in the business. He really is. And uh, honestly, he's a fan of Yacht Rock. He loves the music. He loves what we do. And, and he, I just, you know, he wants to be a part of it. That's the biggest thing. The same for our manager, Andy Gould. You know, he sees the potential there and he wants to be a part of it. And he believes in it. And he sees also how people respond to it, which is, is not something to be taken lightly. You know, we started in, in 2017 and literally since the beginning, it's, it's blown us all away how incredibly viral it's been you know people are so excited about this music and we just want to keep doing our job which is to you know play this music as well as or better than the original in some way and and put on great shows and keep people coming back and creating memories yeah i guess i should explain that a little bit yachtly crew is like the hits of the 70s and 80s sort of soft rock a little bit more yeah Yeah. feeling and kind of an island vibe at times but you guys are in full captain's outfits. You got the aviators. You've got the names like Philly Ocean and Sailor Hawkins. And so with this yep. tour, you're saying you're doing 100 some dates. Are you going to places that you haven't been before? Because 100, that's a lot of shows. So many. Yeah, we're going to so many places we've never been. And quite a few places we have been as well. But, you know, there are some places that we just played for the first time last year. And they sold out three months in advance when we announced our next show there. For example, there's a couple of shows in the Boston area where like we sold out last year and then we, we announced a new date like two months afterwards and it sold out almost immediately. It's just been amazing to see how people respond and they want to they come see the show. So when you're touring, I don't have the best memory for things like that. My memory just is a little bit better in different areas. I imagine if I was on tour, I would like, I have no idea if we've played this venue before, unless I'm like, oh yeah, down the hall is the bathroom. So do you know what cities you haven't played or is someone like, hey, we haven't played these, we haven't played these, we haven't played these, or or how's your memory when these days kind of start to blur together with the travel? When it comes to like remembering what we're going to be doing, I'm not so great. You know, like I don't have our schedule memorized more than about two to three weeks out because it's just too much. Um, in terms of dates, I know the areas that we're going to be hitting. And like, I know like last fall, we were in Idaho Falls, but we didn't make it to Boise. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. You know, but we're getting closer and we're playing more and more. I know we're playing up in Cheyenne, Wyoming this year. We're going to be in Wisconsin and Minnesota. We're going to be in the Chicago area again. We're going to be in Detroit. We were just in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia and Buffalo, New York. And we're playing a ton of places that we haven't been before. And it's really cool to see people come out and and get really excited about it. So who's got the best chicken wings when you're traveling around? 
Well, I'm I'm a Buffalo boy, so you know the answer there. My experience, and I grew up in northeastern Pennsylvania, so in college we'd sneak across the border into New York, mostly for the chicken wings, but it never was like a big place. It was always a little sketchy. Oh, yeah, mom and pop shop, a little yeah. bit sketchy, and they're like, no, 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 this is the best, this is the best. This is is the that best. Yeah. the experience yeah. of someone that actually grew up and lived there, though? Is that is that accurate? That's always how it is, yeah. That's all, you know, like the best pizza is like the shop down the street from you. Everybody says that, you know. So everybody's shop is the best. Are you out of any venues just because of the sheer size of you guys? You're like the Almond Brothers and Slipknot. You've got seven guys in the band. You've got saxophones. Yeah. You've got keyboards. You need a little bit of space. I've been in a lot of these yeah. small venues. You, you wouldn't fit. Now, obviously, you're pulling in a crowd too, so that changes the venues. Is that any sort of juggling act for your management? Um, you know, our agent does a really good job. You know, in the last couple of years, we've been really lucky to build into these like larger venues where, you know, we're playing to rooms of like 800 to 1,000 people pretty much every night. So, you know, but when we got started, we were playing in bars that hold like 250 to 300 people and the stage is like an eight by eight. And, <laughs> it, it, you know, we could basically not move up there. Uh, but we found a way. We found a way to put on a show. and. We love the venues that we're playing right now. I mean, it's just, it's so cool to see things grow and get bigger and bigger. So did you ever add Never Let Her Slip Away by Andrew Gold? Because Grohl said, hey, this is one song that you got to get. We are working on it. We love that. We love that song. It's such a good song. When Grohl did give you guys a shout out, you think he's aware that you've got a guy named Sailor Hawkins in the band? Oh, yes. Yes, he is definitely. Mm Mm-hmm. So talk about the impact maybe of the Foo Fighters and Taylor then, because then there's, there's two connections right away. Is that just a lucky yeah. coincidence or is that, you know, obviously we're stepping out of Yacht Rock, but I mean, they're big ABBA yeah. fans, big Yacht Rock fans too. Oh yeah. Well, you know, Dave Grohl, he did Baker Street. So, you know, he, he has great musical taste. It's one of our dreams to be able to maybe have him come up and play with us uh, someday. Mm-hmm. We'll see if that materializes. But, um, you know, uh, I, I know that our drummer, uh, his stage name is Sailor Hawkins after Taylor Hawkins. And, you know, he's a big rock and roll fan and has been his whole life, as we all are. You know, we just have an appreciation for all different kinds of genres of music. So, yeah, that plays into it a little bit. We kind of bring a little bit more of a rock and roll vibe to this music while still honoring the original. Tell me a little bit about the pros and cons of being in a, I'll, I'll use the term, a, a tribute act. I, I was just thinking as myself, it would be really fun to be in your position because you don't have to be anything except like the champion of these songs. You're mm-hmm. not pressed like, I got to come up with the next big hit and I got to come up with the next yeah. big thing. You're like driving around, you hear a song, you're like, guys, guys, we totally missed this song. And then you've got the costumes and stuff like that. So talk about the pros and cons of being in the musical business, but on this side of the coin. Yeah. I mean, we don't even really identify as a tribute act because we're not, we're not covering just one artist. We, since the beginning, have endeavored to be a show, to set ourselves apart from, you know, even some of the other bands that call themselves the Yacht Rock Band. We're not really interested in just kind of of going through the motions. We wanted to do our own thing with it. We wanted to put on an incredible show that really left people going, man, that was like incredibly memorable. And I'm going to think about this night for the rest of my life. And so we wanted to kind of set ourselves apart in that way. And, and we still endeavor to do that every single show that we, that we play. So then talk about how did writing your own original song, Sex on the Beach, come together? Was that a natural progression? Oh, was that in the works for a while? And did it come together easily? It, it did. Um, we, you know, when we started out, it was always like we, we, we didn't know how big it would get, but we knew that we wanted to take it as far as it could. You know, we, we, our vision since the beginning is like, we want to be playing to stadiums of people. Like that's where, that's where we would like to see this go. So about a year and a half or so in, um, you know, and all of us have been in original bands as well and songwriters and, and all that stuff. My guitar player, Tommy said, you know, I have this idea for a song. Do you want to work on that? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So we all got together and we flushed out this idea for sex on the beach and we wanted it to be a song that sounded like, it came from the 70s and it fit alongside these songs with, without question. That was, kind of our, that was kind of our challenge and our goal. I'm incredibly proud of what, what we wrote in that song. It sounds like a 70s song. Even the, the opening drum fill, the do 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 it just has this vibe. We wrote a really, really fun song. We ultimately got Mario Lopez to be in it. 
it was just fantastic. Um, and, and, and it's been really well received. I mean, people show up to our shows and they ask, why, you know, if we don't get the chance to play it, why don't you play Sex on the Beach? And when we do play it, they know all the words. They sing along with the song. So that is a really, really cool experience. That's awesome. Do any people not realize that you wrote it? And they're like, I love that song, Who Did It? And you're like, that, that's us. Because <laughs> well, that also would be like a, a compliment in a way. You're like, we fit right in. We did it. Like we got a, a, yeah. a, a, a Yacht Rock song. I always let people know that we did it. So there's oh, no okay. confusion. Yeah. <laughs> Also, because, you know, it gets people to go listen to it outside of a concert setting. They can really hear it. You know, sometimes, you know, if you're moving around, there's, you know, there's people talking next to you. You can't always take in all the lyrics and people want to hear the song. So I think, you know, introduce it. Hey, this is our song, Sex on the Beach. Check it out on Spotify or wherever. And people go and listen to it. And they have a whole new relationship with that song after they leave the concert. Can you tell me the trick to picking out good aviators? I've struggled. I think a pair looks cool. They're crappy a week yeah. later. I lose a pair that I can't find a good pair. I try to hit up the fair when they've got the sunglass hut. But you guys, you've got yeah. seven guys. So I imagine you get a couple of pairs at a time because if you're like, I, I can't find my aviators, it's like, well, you can't go on stage without them. I mean, it's just important to the band. Oh, no, no. Along we, with we, the hat. You have, to, you have yeah. to have your aviators. You know, I'm, I'm somewhat of a sunglass aficionado. I, I'm not even kidding. I think I have 20 pairs of sunglasses. I try to switch it up. Uh, Revo, the sunglass company, has been really, really good to us. They've given us multiple pairs of sunglasses so often we wear those they're really nice quality and they're comfortable and all that stuff i like having different options myself i got you know, everything from ray-bans to persoles you know so just kind of what i'm what i'm in the mood to wear i even have wayfarers and, and i have some aviators i have wayfarers i have club masters all these different styles because you know it depends what vibe i'm in you know what i mean can i ask you what's the most expensive pair of sunglasses you have I've gotten right to around a hundred dollars. I have a couple that are like two or three hundred, and I I don't usually wear those at a show because I'm too afraid to lose them after the show or something. Absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. But um, I'm pretty good at hanging on to them. What about the captain's outfits? Then obviously they're tailored for each person. And then do you have backups? I mean, when you're traveling, what's your wardrobe just for the stage production like? Oh yeah, I mean we we have the same wardrobe. We have you know two or three different wardrobes that we that we have with us at any given time because especially when we're on tour and we're playing multiple nights in a row you know we're moving around a lot it, honestly we get hot we get sweaty seven guys on a stage and a couple hundred people to a thousand people in a venue it, it can get warm so yeah we got to have we got to have more than one uniform at our disposal and then you know we're just we're doing laundry <laughs> you know it's 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 not very glamorous as they say rock and roll ain't pretty but, you know, it just the show must go on and we got to look good. Do you think Motley Crue is aware of the name? I mean, it's a pretty good chance. Oh, they definitely are. Yeah. In fact, uh, Tommy Lee has a Yachtly Crue t-shirt. Oh, no way. Yeah. Did, yeah. So cool. Did yeah. he post it or did, did someone tell you or how did you figure that out? Yeah, he posted it on Instagram a couple of years ago and we were like, you got to be kidding me. So he's either, um, he's either naked or in your shirt. Yeah, I think he's naked from the waist down and then wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Yachtly Crew one. Yeah. Well, it's the nation's number one yacht rock band. Think uh, Rupert Holmes, Toto, Steve Winwood. The full steam ahead tour, 100 plus cities. They're on that now. The six song EP sees the day is out. They're teasing something for the future. Can you give me any more of a little hint about what that might be. Well, there might be some songs involving sleigh bells if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Great. We love it. Philly Ocean, yeah. Yachtly Crew, it's nice to talk to you again, man, and good luck on the tour. Thank you so much, Forrest. We'll talk to you soon, buddy.